Is it working yet, Joe? <laughs> no, we got lights up here, but why don't we have? So this guy's not working. Dead here, the bulb's bad. Uh, that's a uh, that's a problem. Oh, that's uh, probably the problem. Look Green at that. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. Well, we hooked up the trailer. Majority of the lights work, but the two side marker lights in the back are not working. Bought a used trailer. Not everything works. We got some work to do. Oh, I'm so strong. So we're just gonna grab it with our pliers here and unthread it. And <laughs> it actually works, let's go. So I mowed grass on the side and my business is doing pretty good. So I bought an enclosed trailer. We're gonna pimp this thing out to make it perfect to get my job completely done to have everything I need to do my job in the enclosed trailer. Last time what we did was just make sure it was safe. So we one, made sure that the vehicle, my Tahoe, could handle it and she's good. We made sure we had a brake controller. It already had it installed, which is nice. We went over the brakes to make sure that they worked and they did work. And then we also did a little bit of adjusting with our hubs. We made sure that the bearings were good, the seals were good, and we made a little bit of adjustment. So the brakes work, we're safe there. The axles are good, thank God. And we're pretty much ready to just make sure it's nice and road legal. So what does it mean to be legal? We wanna make sure all the lights are working properly. We wanna make sure that everything has power from the back of the vehicle all the way to the back of the trailer. It's mainly for the people on the road, just to make sure that they can see you turning, see you stopping, see you backing on up. And it's also gonna be for you because you don't wanna get a ticket because it's the law. All right, let's back up to this old girl and hook it up to power. I need to show you what's going on. We got a stubborn light, got a stubborn light. First things first, we already know the jack works. We know power's good there. But, right, once I push this in there, giving everything power. And I'm not gonna leave my car running. I just turn these on right here. And I am gonna turn on my flashers. Okay, so, lights work, lights work. This light works, so that's good but this one isn't working. So we know we got power coming back, and uh, I think what might be the problem is we have this little caulk right here, so maybe it's water. Oh God, this thing is destroyed. Okay, I don't think it's wiring issue, I think it's just this thing being shot 100%. Luckily, we have all the parts, so I'm gonna find it, figure out exactly what's gonna be the best. Same size, I'm just gonna measure this and put it on our website and try to match it up with something similar. And I'm definitely gonna go with LEDs. But that thing is, uh, that thing's toast. We need a new one. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, I need some butt connectors. Check. I need some self tappers. Check. And that's all I need. Look what I got, new parts, yay. Well, definitely need new hardware because we don't even have a matching set. So I gotta use two bits and this thing is completely stripped out. So I kind of have to do it by hand to get it to come out. Whoever did this, uh, whatever, I'll fix it. It is what it is. Honestly, could be worse, but let's just, uh, Hold that off until we connect the new one and we know it works. Cause I'm hoping that it's just the light. Obviously this thing is trashed. 
but I'm just hoping we don't have any other wiring issues because I would rather not have to redo all that because I'm not the best at wiring. You can get a little sticky whenever you're wiring up a trailer. But fingers crossed. Come on. Here we go. So one problem that we're having is we have power ran to it, but this supplies its own ground. So that could have been the issue or it's just absolutely shot. But now we got to figure out what to do with this wire. It's, it's too, we're not going to be able to just mount it like this because we're just going to have all that excess and that looks like garbage. Okay, so I think it runs right in this corner. I think we can maybe tap into a wire for this light. It might be behind this. So let's grab the right bit and then take this cover off. If I can find the right size. Dang it. Come on, Adam. Come on, Adam. Not really the right size. All right, let's get the right size and pull this guy off. So whoever put this in here used an impact, and I don't know if you can see it, but it they are all completely, not stripped, but uh, they use an impact. They, they, it's, I can't get the right size in there. So I actually found a way to get it out. I took these self tabbers and I just wedge it in there and it's loose enough to where it gets it out. So I'm gonna do that for both the right and the left side. They even stripped it out too. But it works. So I'm gonna continue to do that. And now we should have wires. Oh, oh. A lot of wires. So this is the power wire and it's not really doing it what it needs to do. So we're gonna cut it, get it out of there. But the problem we gotta solve, it's not really that difficult, but this isn't gonna go through the holes that are already here. So this is a mounting holes. We're using the same size self tapper. So we can't really make those bigger. We can make this a little bit bigger, so that's what I'm gonna do. All right. All right, if you're going through bigger metal, definitely wanna go on the slower end on your drill and not the faster, because that'll just prolong the life of this bit. Little fun facts for you, but this should be good enough. No, all right, bigger, bigger, Adam, bigger. All right, this should be big enough. All right, take two. Dang it, third time's the charm. All right, that's gotta be big enough. If not, I'm gonna go crazy. Okay, we're close. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. How can you, I have one more bigger bit. Man, this thing is stubborn. All right, cool. And this one's easy. Put that through call it a day. I'm not going to mount it up yet just because I want to make sure it actually works. And if it doesn't, we have a bigger problem, but I, I'm confident we'll be fine. So we know this has power because the light that it's spliced into was working. So we don't really have to test it, which is a step we don't have to do, which is great. If you did need to test it, just make sure that your trailer has power, of course. Make sure that all the lights are on. And then what you can do is take a little probe tester and you don't even have to like cut these wires or anything. You kind of just put it on and it's a little nail that goes in there and it'll light up if you got power. And if you don't, 
it uh it won't so so this is to show you how to do it uh just find a good ground this is connected through the frame so that should be good and then this is the wire we tied into so let's go in there i'm gonna poke through this one doesn't have a light it has just a really nice noise and this is the one we sell. So if you guys needed to test it, you don't have to cut any wires or anything like that. Just poke it and find exactly where you need to grab your power and ground from. But this one does have power, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, so now once we do that, go like this, crimp it down. And I recommend using heat treat buck connectors whenever you can just because it uh, once you heat it up, it's gonna be watertight. And that was kind of what ruined our last one. So let's prepare for that. So we don't have to redo the work we've already done. Twist it together real good. Stick that in that side. Perfect. Crimp it down. And then before I heat this thing up, I am going to test it just to make sure that we're good to go. So that's that. And luckily we had really, really short self tappers um, just because the sidewalls are pretty thin. So all we got to do for this is to take that off, put this on and then we can screw it in. I'm going to go right here. Because this is a lot thinner than this sidewall, so be mindful of that. And make sure you're going to have a clean ground. Don't put it on any, like, rusty part or anything like that. This is going to be interesting. All right. And check that out. So the wires were good. It was literally just the... Uh, it was just the housing itself that was all rusted out. So... That's good, that wasn't as bad as I thought. We had to do a little bit of drillage just to get everything through there uh, because the one that was on here was not available anymore. They stopped making it. But the reason why we grabbed this one, one, it was the same size as you can see right here. So it was the same size and it has a little bit better of a seal so it should not leak and corrode near as quick as the other one. And this one's also LED because LED is the way to go. What I mean by LEDs are better, well, they're gonna last a lot longer and they're gonna draw a lot less power from the vehicle. So that is what I'm really looking for. I like efficiency and I like something that's actually gonna last. So that's exactly why you should pretty much convert all your lights to LED if you're doing the work. And now for the easy part. Just gonna screw back in. Don't want to be too tight. So this side. Oh, jeez. All right. And the other one fell out, so we're gonna have to figure out how to get that thing to stay. Probably not use the hole because obviously whoever was screwing all this stuff in loves to uh, over screw it. Okay, so don't tighten it up too much. Don't make the mistake that I'm trying to fix. So that's good. Pop the lens on. Oh yeah, that is uh that's a very sealed light. I do not see that leaking ever. So this light's a lot brighter than the other one. I really just think it's because the other lens was so nasty and fogged up that that was the reason why it wasn't as bright. But this one is an LED, so we are gonna have a lot less draw on the trailer, which is always awesome. And now we're abiding by the law of the road, and that's always good because it's the law. But let's just do the other side. It didn't really take a whole lot of time to swap these out. Obviously, these need to be swapped, so we did it. It didn't take that long. The hardware was probably the hardest part, but out with the old and in with the new, we don't really need those anymore. Uh, yeah, my bad. I'll pick them up. I'll pick them up.
So, we have light. Those are working, they were working before, but if you could see in the back, the nice bright light that we just switched. So now we're legal, so that's good. But now that I'm in the power mindset, I want to add some accessories. I know I want an inverter to be able to use my Milwaukee chargers for my battery so I can charge them while I'm mowing. So when I'm done, my electric weed eater is gonna be nice and charge it up. But I'm pretty OCD when it comes to wiring. I just don't want a bunch of wires running everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna pull this thing into the shop and I'm gonna put a junction box so if I add anything more after the little inverter, I'm gonna just be able to run it from the junction box in front of the coupler to my shelving right here. So there's not a lot of wires going everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and check out our trailer's functions. And when you can either use a test box or just hook up your vehicle. So what we gotta do is I'm gonna grab ground from my white wire here. You can also just ground it to the chassis of your trailer. And with my test box, I'm gonna be testing the right blinker. Ours is color to color, so brown should be the right one. So you can repeat that same exact process for all of the wires and just remember, match it to function, not color. So now that we have all this wiring sorted out and we know every single wire and what it does, now we can go ahead and take our junction box. You kind of want to get an idea of where you want to mount it. I think I'm going to mount it right here. You want to make sure you can get that cap on and you'll be able to tap in from the sides. But before we do all that, what we're going to do is I'm actually planning on using these two sides here to run our wires in. And as you can see, there's no holes. So in our kit that comes with the junction box, we are going to get replacements that will have holes in them. So since I'm using these, I'm just going to take this out, put them back in the box. And these are going to eventually seat into this slot there. What I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm actually going to fish these wires through first. So I'm going to do the same exact thing for our wiring going to our trailer. Once that's done, I'm actually going to start with the wiring that comes from our vehicle. And basically all we gotta do is just put it into the slot like so. But we're gonna have to undo these screws right here, take that off, put it in there. And we might have to avoid these little round plastic pieces here. That's gonna be what's gonna secure our lid into place and then fasten it down and once you think you're done give it a good wiggle and make sure that it's nice and tight and these ring terminals does not come with the kit but we do sell them here so if you don't have any in your garage or anything definitely go and pick those up whenever you grab one of these Always make sure you got a good connection and obviously have enough length to meet it to the right function. So I'm just gonna put this nut on there pretty loosely just so it's not flopping around. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some ring terminals on all of our wires. And for now, I'm just gonna match them up color for color on our junction box. So as you can see here, we just finished our vehicle wiring here. And we're going to basically do the same exact thing for our trailer wiring. We're going to put this into place, but i got to undo these two screws first. And then we're going to go ahead, put those back, and screw them down evenly. So now we can just go ahead and put some ring terminals on all these wires, and we're probably going to have to cut them and strip them back a little bit so they can fit into our junction box. So we got all of our ring terminals on here, and this side over here is gonna be all of our trailer wiring, and over here is gonna be from our vehicle. And what we're gonna do is we, is we put from our vehicle, all these wires have a specific function, so you don't necessarily need to go by the color because a lot of the times these trailer wirings 
aren't going to be color to color. So you could do it one at a time and test each and make sure that you're matching them up function by function. Let's take this nut off. Place it on there. Try to tuck those wires away a little bit. And put that nut back on. And we are going to come through here with the tool to tighten these up. So now that everything is hooked up, now is a great time to test everything out and make sure everything's hooked up correctly. We're going to use the test box, but you can also just use your car. All right, so first we're going to start with our taillights, our left turn signal, our brake lights, and our right turn signals. So now it's going to be the time to mount it in its home. I'm going to angle it like so, and we're going to run some self-tappers through this plate. One thing to note, these self-tappers are not included with our kit. So once that's secured into place, give it a good wiggle, make sure it doesn't go nowhere. And then we can go ahead and put our cap on. It doesn't really matter which way, because these are going to line up regardless. Then we can take our screws, and these were included with our kit. Slide on in there. And you just need a Phillips head, tighten them down. So here's our junction box, and the nice thing about this is now I'm not really limiting myself. So if I want to add more stuff, you can unscrew this, and I can put a bunch of different accessories on here so I don't have to run so many wires. Because I don't ex exactly know what I want, all I do know is that I want to be able to charge my Milwaukee batteries inside. So this is just going to allow me to have some clean, nice, neat wiring. So if I want to add something in the future, I can pretty easily. Now I feel a lot better that we have a junction box to keep all those wires a little bit more neat. I don't want any spaghetti in this trailer. So if I have problems in the future, I don't want to go around searching to see where the heck everything is and where the problem is. So with that, it makes it a lot cleaner and gives me a lot more peace of mind. So now that that's all good, I can start adding some of the things I wanted to add. It's gonna be a little bit easier with that junction box, but today we're gonna to be installing this. This is an inverter, so it's gonna convert from 12 volt DC, which is battery power, to 120 AC, which is what you have at home. So we have a couple different plugs here. So we have three, I only need one charger, really, because usually I have a couple different batteries, but they're usually all charged up and I'm only using one tool at a time because I can't do it all. I could do a lot, but not at all. So we're gonna use this one. It's a thousand watts, which is enough to charge this, but I am gonna go grab Dave just to make sure before I get into the install. Um, quick question. So will this work? Will this power, will this give enough for this so I can charge my batteries? So this is 1000 watts. Yeah. Oh, right here. So max 1500 watts. Okay. And this one, it just says input 120 at 2.1 amps. So, so if it's drawing 2.1 amps, you can calculate that. Uh, How do you do that? To get wattage, it's volts multiplied by amperage. So if we take 120, multiply it by 2.1, I'm not going to do the math. 240 head, something, yeah. Yeah, roughly. So that's how many watts uh, roughly it's going to draw. Oh, okay. So that one has 1,500. This thing's only going to be under 300. Yeah. Right? So we're good? Yep, you're good to go. So I can even hook up three of them. I'll be good. 300 times three is under 1,500. So... Cool, awesome, thanks buddy, no appreciate problem. it. Yep. Let's go. So the battery's up here and uh, we're gonna get started. So I wanna make sure that this is gonna be kind of up and out of the way. So I'm going to plan on putting it right here somewhere, but definitely on the first shelf. So then I'm gonna run these back through the back and we have a battery down low. 
Um, it is good and it is hooked up, so you can't really see it. I can't really bring it out much for you because the wires are short. But I'm going to drop these in, in the back and just connect them straight to the battery. Simple as that. To get on the ground, get dirty. Looking fine with that. All right. So obviously, negative, positive, I know that. So we just need to hook this up, and then uh, that's basically it. Lefty Lucy. So we got our positive over here. So that goes like that. negative on this side simple enough right eh? so now that this is positioned where I want it I'll keep these wires kind of low facing towards the back to get the most out of it just want to make sure I'm not limiting myself strap but I'm gonna go underneath all these wires before I tighten it all down get it positioned to where you want it Do it. There we go. All right, nice and solid. Righty tidy to finish it up. And we're almost halfway there. Nice. So we're good there. I will meet you up top. Let's get an idea with what kind of length we're working with. Um, it would be really cool to have this up like this, but it's gonna have to be way in the back, which I like that. And if we self tap it, the top little shelf, it's only like half inch. So we have short enough hardware for that. Okay, so that's what I wanna do. It'll look clean, it'll look good, it'll be out of the way and I'm not taking up this much surface area on my shelf. So, but the way it is, I'm gonna to have to connect this up first. Obviously, negative, positive. Go ahead and connect those. Make sure they don't touch. Okay, so it's gonna be like that. The one I'm facing down, and then Onto the positive. Perfect. Let's tighten this up quick. Okay. Perfect. All right, this is gonna be interesting holding it up there, but I'll get it done. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to get it lined up properly and to be able to put it exactly where you want. So I'm just crawling on up here. Luckily these uh, shelves hold my weight, so that's good. Come on. Gosh dang it. Oh man. Why do I pick the hardest spot 
It's going to look good, but it is a pain to get it this close to the wall. But I got it. Dang it. Oh my god. Sometimes it's the easiest things that just kick you in the butt. <laughs> I'm gonna have so many screws in this thing. All right, last one. Actually, I got two more tries. Then what happens? I don't know. I start screaming. Or maybe we find a different spot. No! <laughs> Okay. Um, does it work? Ooh, beep. So I wanted to be on the um, on the door side, so I can just open up the door and grab my batteries real quick. Um, I'm gonna put this one here. I'll probably add more in the future because I have two other outlets, but I think this is the spot. Right there, right? Okay, I think that's good. Should be good. Come on. Come on, boy. Oh, man. Aha. Before I grab the tape measure, just to keep my mind sane, I like to see if I could do it on my own without measuring it. We'll see. Look at that, first try. Gosh, I'm awesome. So I just wanna make sure this is clean looking. So I wanna go underneath here. Uh, come on. Uh, up here and plug it on in. Probably put the XF right here. Yeah. Plug that in. Just tuck that away like that. There's that. Oh, let's go. Okay, cool. We are good to go. Look at that. Everything I ever wanted. All charged up too. It's pretty slick, huh? At this point, I'm uh I'm pretty proud of my trailer, but let's uh let's keep going. So we're pretty much done. Uh, we have DC power going through the whole entire trailer. The jack in the front has power and all the lights in the back have power and they all work now, which is good. All the interior lights work and now we have AC power to charge all of my batteries and my phone right there. So that's awesome. There is one more thing that was already on this trailer that I have not fixed that I really want to address and it's that fan right here. Not a fan of this noise. But I think I know what the problem is. I think there's something stuck in it. So we're gonna take this thing out and uh, hopefully fix it because I don't want to listen to that all day. Four little zip zips should expose the fan past the screen. Probably just take all of them out. Two moss. Oops, 
Okay, I'm gonna try to drop this. There we go. So I think, so yeah, there it is. See the little piece of paper right there? Started to fret back. So I can reach in there and tear it off. Look at that. Simple enough. Now let's put this back. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So what we did last time was the safety aspect of it. So mainly just making sure that the brakes work, making sure that the axles are good, making sure the bearings and everything's fine. This time we made sure it was legal. So make sure that all the power is going to where it needs to and all the lights work. So we fixed the side lights, check. And we did fix that noisy little fan that was bugging me too. And we also put some accessories in today. So that what, that's what really got me extremely excited about it because that's why I bought this trailer. I wanted to pimp it out and make it perfect for my mowing business. So that's what we're gonna do next time. So if you stuck with me this long, hang around for the next episode and that's gonna be the really fun one where we really pimp this thing out so I can go out and mow my grass in style and make that money. So I will see you guys next time.